guest in this segment to open up the show is the West Virginia State Democratic Party Chairman Delegate Mike Pushkin. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning. And um, I see y'all are getting a here. You get a, got a lot of snow up there. We, did, we didn't get any in Charleston. We did have some flooding, and the schools are on a two-hour delay down here, but we had no snow. Oh, my goodness. Is the uh, flooding severe? Uh, I, I don't – well, I mean, it, it's severe in, in the areas where it is, yes. Sure. But, uh, uh, yeah, I just got word of it because the notice went out that there was a two-hour delay. And of course, the weather is not all that bad here. So I was curious as to why there was a two hour delay. But in some areas, there is some high water in the roads. Maybe because of the uh, some high water, as you mentioned, the flooding and such. Well, yeah. most of our guests today will be by phone because of the weather we've got uh, here in the panhandle. So you'll be fitting right in uh, nicely with your phone call here this morning, sir. Now, otherwise, I would have you know, driven right up there. But I saw the weather reports. So I decided to stay in Charleston and call you. This is sweet little 11 hour turnaround back and forth. Not a problem. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, the Democratic Party has a resolution to put reproductive rights on the ballot. Mike, can you tell me about this resolution, how it is stated, and if you're getting any momentum on it? Well, it's it's almost identical to the resolution that Ohio voters uh, uh, approved of overwhelmingly. Um, it would. Uh, it's not just. Uh, it's all reproductive rights. All decisions uh, that adults should be able to make for themselves regarding uh, reproductive healthcare, whether uh, that's um, uh, fertility drugs uh, or, you know, or abortion. Uh, it has all reproductive rights in it. And it also mentions, you know, uh, the uh, fetal viability. So it's basically a return to row, return to what was, uh, you know, the law of the land for 50 years in this country. And uh, our, you know, our position is no matter how you feel about the issue, it's important to let the voters decide just as they have in other states. Uh, so, yeah, we have a resolution to put that on the ballot. And while they're running all these other meaningless resolutions, they, they, sh they should allow voters to have a choice in something as important as this. You also have uh, cannabis on the ballot. Is that going to be on the ballot or a resolution to put it on there? No, the, the Democrats are pushing. For, we have two resolutions for constitutional amendments. That's how you get issues on the ballot. And of course, one is for uh, re reproductive freedom, and the other is for adult-use cannabis, to put that on the ballot as it you know, has been approved in many other states as well. Is it to recreationalize it, decriminalize it, or what? It would be to uh, legalize for adult use. Legalize for adult use. Is, yes. Is that accompanied by... That, uh, that the people should decide, uh, I'm not, you know, no matter how you feel about it, once again, the people should decide whether or not uh, uh, adults should be able to make that determination for themselves. So this is separate from the medical use of cannabis that the state approved a few years back? Yeah, this would be to allow for just the legal use of it for, for adults over 21. All right, very good. And uh, your comments otherwise in terms of how this session is going, as we are, what, a bit more than half, about halfway through now or what? Yeah, more well, than half. If I could two word, you want a two-word description of this session? Sure. Uh, do nothing. Do nothing. Uh, there's really been not much of any substance done, as as we all are aware of. The state has many needs. There are a lot of issues that need to be taken up right now. It's a shortage of of, of teachers in the classroom. We have a a, a crisis level shortage of, of of teaching aides in special ed classrooms. We're at a crisis there. Our, our prisons continue to be in a crisis because of uh, staffing shortages. Our, our foster care system is is uh, out of control because of a shortage of CPS workers and a lack of services uh, to families to, to hopefully keep them from getting in that position in the first place. We have a whole litany uh, of, of issues, and, and the legislature just decides to play electioneer politics and run you know, meaningless resolutions, uh, do-nothing bills, just election year politics. They're more concerned about, you know, banning books and, and uh, passing bathroom bills and just a bunch of what I would consider, you know, meaningless bills that don't really affect the day-to-day -day lives of West Virginians instead of the hard work that we need to do. I think we need to put partisan politics aside, leave the R, the D at the door, and actually, you know, roll up our sleeves and get to work. There's a lot of issues that people of West Virginia need us to work on, and they're refusing to do it. So, yeah, I'd say it's a do-nothing legislature. Unfortunately, they're trying to mimic their colleagues in the uh, in the U.S. Congress and just do absolutely nothing. John Gilstrap. 
in the women's uh, reproductive rights bill that you're proposing, specifically with regard to abortion, is there a limit? Is there a third trimester uh, cutoff to this, or is it full term? Uh, no, there is a limit. It's, it's based on basically it's a return to row. It's about fetal viability. So there would be a yeah, government interest in, in the third trimester. It, it's it's not just uh, – it, it's, it's basically a return to what we had before. That's what it is. And it's very – it's not just similar to the Ohio resolution. It is the Ohio resolution with the, with the voters in Ohio overwhelmingly adopted uh, just a, a, a few months ago. And, and to be clear, it's not a bill. It's a resolution to put it on the ballot to allow the voters to decide. So whether you're for it or against it, we feel that the voters should have a right to have some say-so in it. How do we assess viability – Prior to birth, here's a, a quick story from from my past. Give me, allow me a minute or so. I was in, in late 1985 or 86. I was dispatched on a call for um, for a miscarriage, which is in medical terms a spontaneous abortion. And you we were got an the, EMT at the time. I was an EMT at the time, yeah. and um, it was a late term abortion. She was, uh, it was about three months early, so I guess six months into the pregnancy. Very distraught, obviously, and and we well, were, it was a miscarriage, correct? It, you, well, yeah, well, that's so that's the rest of the story. Toy. Unfortunately, it was a horrible tragedy, is what you're talking let, about. Let, let me finish the, the story. Women should be protected when these things happen. Let well. me finish the story. Yeah. She was yeah. actually going into labor. It was labeled a miscarriage by the dispatcher. We got there, and out came a little girl. Um, not didn't look all that good. She was the wrong color. We'd put the bulb syringe in her. She pinked up. She gave a cry, um, not much of a cry. And we transported her off to the hospital. The radio traffic was, was very exciting. When we got to the hospital, there was a whole team of physicians that were there to whisk this, this abortion, you know, this, this fetus that actually had heartbeat and fingers and a cry and all of that. So our, it was presumed then that that was not a viable time for a child. That's why it was dispatched as, an, as, as a miscarriage. It turns out that it was viable, at least for a time. And be honest with you, my rule back then was I, I never doubled back. You know, I, I delivered a, 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 a living child in my mind. So as, as medicine increases and, and, and we become better at this, the window of viability closes or extends, depends on how you look at it. So how do we determine before we abort a fetus that that fetus might have lived? Because we see children in NICUs at a very, very early term delivery that somehow make it through. So at what point do we not call this a child? Well, if it was a return to row. It's, it's I mean, it, it basically the, the, during the first trimester, there's very little government uh, interest, and that would be between a uh, you know a woman or the family and her doctor. We feel the government should stay out of it, and, and then the exceptions come in, uh, you know, of course later on. And that's what generally what determines viability is the number of weeks, just like it's always been. So in but right now, what you have right now, what you have is uh, uh, a ban, a complete ban. The ex the exceptions do not exist in reality. And I think that that's way past where most people in West Virginia are. So take it the uh, other yeah, way. In a complete ban, we've taken that, that decision away from women, away from doctors. And uh, you, know, in, in, you, you mentioned this, this uh, uh, incident that happened. And thank God it, it turned out the way it did, and, and that child survived. But in a case where it, there, there was something did go wrong, um, and, 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 and the, the woman's health or life uh, was on the line. Now in West Virginia, it's very likely it's very likely that the doctor would just have to let that woman die because of this Republican legislature and and their big government policies that feel that they should be involved in every single decision that people make, whether it's in the in their doctor's office, in their library. Uh, I'm, I'm you know the, your, your party used to be the party of small government. Uh, no longer they're for taking rights away from people. And the Democratic Party is now for restoring those rights. But fine. But I want to get back to what you're proposing. <laughs> the, what, the language that you're proposing, you say it has to do with viability. So I'm asking, what is that language? 
how do we, if we're going to tie it to viability, Roe was first semester, first trimester, and we obviously move past that in, in practical law. So are you suggesting that, that the West Virginia voters vote on legalizing abortion only in the first trimester? With exceptions in, in later on, of course, to protect the, the life and the, and the health of the mother or in instances of uh, or protecting victims of rape and incest. We feel that's where most people in West Virginia are, and we would like uh, to prove that's where most people in West Virginia are by allowing them to vote on it. Now, sir, if you're against it, we'd like for you to have the right to vote against it. What we don't feel is that Republican lawmakers, which are uh, overwhelmingly uh, old men, uh, should be making these decisions for young women. John Bodwell. Mike, uh, let me ask you this. You were talking about the fact that we have a you know, shortage of teachers, shortage of you know, caseworkers for foster care and stuff like that. So I guess you and the Democratic Party are going to come out in favor of locality pay. So the areas of the state where it costs $300,000 for a house and the people can't afford to live here with any of those jobs can live and you know, we can have caseworkers for our um, – for our foster kids, we can have teachers. So are you prepared to say the Democratic Party is ready to support locality pay in the areas that are... The that Democratic ha- Party is prepared to support the pay raise, at least the pay raise that the governor proposed that's going to have a... has not a very high likelihood of passing through well, this Republican supermajority. Well, and that, and so that, that pay raise, and that pay pay raise doesn't put all. people in the Eastern that's Panhandle not. anywhere near where they need to be. Well, I, I feel that it should. I think we should have a meaningful pay raise so it affects... But, Across the board, uh, to to you know value and respect the profession of teaching to bring people into that field, uh, we have a shortage across the board in in, uh, in the public sector. We need to uh, make those jobs more attractive wherever they are in the state. But you're talking about look, you're not going to. It's not likely there's going to be any pay raise, not even enough to offset the uh, PEIA premium increases that they passed last year. And they're doing nothing to address this people problem that we have across the state of West Virginia. I wasn't asking what they were doing. I was asking, would you support it because it would be good for the people of of West Virginia, especially in the growing areas? We're not even having that discussion because they're not talking about they're not talking about locale. They're not even talking about any sort of pay raise. Doesn't your party get to doesn't your party get to discuss its platform among itself? I mean, don't you guys discuss with each other and then and then take what you want? I mean, I'm just saying I'm, I'm an Eastern yeah, Panhandle well, we guy and we're struggling. We, we don't set the agenda in, in the legislature. We are for a pay raise for public employees, a significant pay raise, more than what the, even the governor has proposed. But what the, even this feeble pay raise that the governor proposed, it barely, if it, do, if it even does offset the PEIA, PEIA increases, that's not likely to pass. Because the Republicans in this legislature I often say they know the cost of everything, but they know the value of nothing. They don't value the profession of teaching. They don't value uh, the government's role in doing the very least it can do, and that's protecting children who are in state's custody. So you can talk about you know, all these issues. But they're not taking them up. They're doing nothing. The state is in a crisis. And you have a governor and a, and a Republican legislature bragging about flat budgets and talking about this rocket ship ride that never got off the launch pad. So if, if we're doing so well, let's fund the basic services of government to take care of people who have no ability to take care of themselves, children in foster care, people with disabilities. You know, What about our public retirees who haven't seen a cost of living adjustment in years? Let's address these issues. So you can talk about all the hypotheticals you want. But we're in session right now. We could actually do some things to help West Virginians. Uh, instead, uh, they're choosing to do nothing. Let me let me ask about they're Canada. They're going to talk about libraries and bathrooms and a bunch of meaningless drivel that helps nobody. We'll get to libraries in a second. Let me here. ask about cannabis for a second. Do you think the, the youth of West Virginia will be better served with more people over 21 smoking marijuana? I mean, studies have shown in states where they have legalized drugs that crime has gone up, productivity has gone down, all sorts of things. Do you think that benefits the children of West Virginia? uh, Show me one of those studies. I think that grown-ups should be able to make decisions for themselves. I don't think this has anything to do with children because it would be above the age of 21, just like alcohol, which is a far more dangerous drug, 
where if you drink too much of it, it could actually kill you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not, I don't condone the use. I'm not condemning the use of it. But in most, in the states that have legalized it for adult use, not a single one of them has said, you know what, that was a mistake. We're not going to do it. Well, the, well, they don't say that because of the tax, the tax revenue. revenue. The tax revenue could. That could fund PEIA, for example, so you wouldn't have to keep taking it out on the backs of our of our public workers. Um, I just basically would come down on the side of freedom, and and allow you know trust grown adults to make decisions for themselves. Okay, that's where we stand. And the Republican Party, like I said, wants to insert itself in every single decision people makes makes these days. Let's talk about this library bill that you have brought up a couple of times, Mike. I see that the committee, uh, Judiciary Committee, uh, voted 21 to 3 to advance the bill after about two and a half hours of discussion in the court of the article that I'm reading. And you could, uh, if, you, if you take a moment, give us some details about this bill, how much you know about it, because you mentioned it a couple of times in this morning's conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I generally come down, on this, once again, on the side of freedom. I'm against censorship. Uh, we don't have a book rating system like you have for uh, movies and television shows. We can't expect librarians to go through every single book in the library and toss out anything that somebody may or may not see as uh, as inappropriate. Uh, I'm for you know allowing. You know, what about what happened to parents? Why can't uh, parents just uh, have a you know more say so in what their children can or can't read? Hopefully, they're they're reading period. The bill itself will uh, come along with a $25,000 fine that's already in West Virginia's possible uh, punishments for obscenity laws up to five years in prison. What would uh, enact these fines and punishments, Mike, in this bill? Um, well, I'm not sure how it made it through the committee late last, you know, late yesterday when it got out, but I'm just going to say generally I'm not for um, – uh, you know, locking up librarians or issuing fines or, or being the uh, thought police for the state of West Virginia. Uh, I'm going to come down on the side of freedom. That means uh, freedom of expression and, and freedom for people to learn and read what they want. Uh, I, I think it, once again, it's more uh, big government policies from from the Republican Party. Uh, want to control every decision in our lives. Uh, it's 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 there's a lot of things that need to be done in West Virginia. I'll go back to it. There's a, the foster care system that's uh, out of control right now, 8,000 children in, in state custody, some of which we're hearing are being dropped off at uh, hotels and motels, cabins at state parks across the state, largely unattended. Uh, we don't have enough teachers in the classroom. Um, we've had a, an on, ongoing scandal with the state police. So every single function of, of government in the state I mean, seems to be just uh, in, in, uh, out of control, and yet this is what the Republican supermajority wants to focus on, banning books, uh, just meaningless culture war stuff, just to uh, get people uh, fearful of each other, angry at each other, and distract them from the real issues that they're not taking up. And so I- I'd like to put the election year politics – you know, BS to the side and actually do some work for the people of West Virginia. But, you know, if you want to talk about uh, library bills, and we'll go ahead. Go, let's go ahead. Okay, let's do that. Um, the as, as one who writes books for a living, I'm pretty close to this this book and library issue. In fact, my I've had a book that was one of the most hundred back banned books in America at one point back in the day. Here's the thing with banning books. Um, what what is being proposed, as I understand it, and I have not read the the detailed language of this bill, when you're when you're deciding which books to to buy using public funds, that's a choice that is, and the ones who are not selected are not banned. They are not selected. I'm going to guess that most of my books are not going to be found in an elementary school library, and where should they be? They haven't been banned. They just were not chosen. So I think we talk about electioneering and and about uh, hyperbolic language. We we need to consider that. And I, I just wanted to throw that out also from the CDC okay. website. Three in 10 people who use marijuana develop mar- marijuana use disorder, meaning uh, that they are unable to stop using marijuana, even though it's causing health and social problems in their lives. That's from their website. Just, I just, you asked. So I and then there are a lot of, a lot of alcoholics uh, in, in this country as well, but the policy of prohibition was a, an absolute failure. 
in the, the country uh, back, you know, in the uh, in the 30s, uh, got rid of prohibition. It didn't work. So I'm basically on that issue just for allowing grown adults to make that determination for themselves, just like they do with alcohol. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't think it's good for you. But I, I, you know, I trust myself to make that decision. I trust you to make that decision for yourself. Now, as far as that library bill, it's not just talking about school libraries. It's talking about public libraries, and I think that's very dangerous territory when we're talking about locking up librarians uh, for the content of, of material in a library. How about we just you know, do a better job of society, and, uh, and, but allowing for free thought and free expression? Mike, I've got about a minute left here in regards to the pay raise bill. Uh, it had been treated like it would be passed as a slam dunk after the governor's state of the state speech. Are you throwing bombs this morning or do you really believe it won't get passed? Uh, well, I think that, you know, like you said slam dunk. I'll use another basketball analogy. I think you have the, uh, the Senate finance that might get called for goaltending. Um, anything with a price tag on it is having a hard time because Republicans, like I said before, they know the cost of everything. They know the value of nothing. And, uh, you know, we're told that we have this surplus. We're told how great the state is doing, but they're not willing to actually address uh, many of these issues. And a lot of it has to do with a lack of uh, the staffing uh, crisis in the public sector. Uh, they made the problem worse by jacking up uh, PEIA premiums last session. The governor proposed this pay raise. Uh, so far, uh, not seen it moving. In fact, we've heard from the Senate Finance Chair, uh, Eric Tarr, who opposes it. Well, uh, he, he's in a position to, to, to do some goaltending there. He, that bill would have to go through his committee, and he's opposed to it. So, yeah, it's going to have a hard time getting passed. I can tell you the Democratic Party fully supports uh, even greater pay raise and a cost of living adjustment for our retirees who, who never get a pay raise. Yet their utilities go up. Uh, the cost of living goes up for them, and we're not taking care of them. We need to take care of those who have taken care of us. It's only fair. Mike, thank you for your time this morning. As always, appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on. Have a good day. Hope you don't get the snow. You too. You too.